Hello fellow action figure connoisseurs, welcome to Digital Caveman Presents. I am your host, Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting my top 10 Transformers of 2020. This list represents my opinions and will probably differ from yours. Thank you for watching, and if you like what you see, please comment below, like, share, subscribe, and ding that bell. Without further ado, let's get into it. Coming in with the honorable mention is Ironworks. He has a pretty good looking robot mode, and his alt base modes aren't bad, which is saying a lot for base formers. Also, he has a hook for a hand. Coming in at number 10 is Thrust. I know some people had issue with Earthrise Seekers using some engineering from the Classics version of them. And there's the gapping issue at the top of the chest. Also, this one was a Target exclusive, which for 2020 was a curse of unavailability in some cases. Nevertheless, still a headache to find for retail price. I think Thrust is the best looking use of this Seeker mold with nice colors and mostly crisp paint details. In the number 9 position is Generation Selects Black Rarici, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. It could have just as easily been fast track, but I like the colors on this one better. Robot mode looks really good with nice clean paint applications. Vehicle mode looks pretty good too. But I wish that he had been engineered so that Titan Masters could ride inside the cab rather than sitting on a knife on the back of his head. Spear mode was a nice thought, but not executed well at all. It's too floppy to be useful. Period. Coming in at the number 8 spot is Smokescreen. He's not a character that I have a lot of connection to, but this figure looks awesome. His bright colors make him look great and very cartoony, which in my opinion is a good thing. It invokes a feeling of the G1 cartoon, which I do have a big connection to. I also have the Earthrise Prowl and Blue Streak, but I think Smokescreen is the best looking of the three. At number 7 is Trailbreaker. Robot mode is good looking, but not a lot of paint on this guy. Where there is, though, it's crisp and clean. And wow, that Autobot symbol just jumps out at you like, Hey, I'm an Autobot! Alt mode is good except for the bottom front where you can see the arms. The camper back makes this version of the mold look better than hoist. The number six spot goes to a possibly controversial choice, the Quintesson Judge. Yes, the alt mode is a raging dumpster fire, but it's a Quintesson. Thank you, Hasbro, for finally giving us one. All the faces look great, and some even have a moving jaw. The paint apps are good. Bendable or articulated tentacles would have been a nice touch for this figure. Number five is the Netflix spoiler pack number two, Nemesis Prime. Yes, it's the Siege Optimus Prime mold. Yes, it's the same weapons from the Power of the Prime's Nemesis Prime. But it's Nemesis Prime. The black with red windshields, as always, looks great. This one comes with lots of accessories, too. Two swords, one of which transforms into Giza. 
two arm cannons, a rifle, Micro Master Fangtron, some Energon cubes, which were in that disgusting Play Doh like substance. Ugh. A repair bot, a blast effect, and a trailer. The only thing missing is Nemesis Roller. Number four, the Netflix Bumblebee. What can I say? Everyone's scrappy little yellow buddy is a VW bug again. All I can say is awesome. Great job, Hasbro. This one, you knocked it out of the park. I like this mainline Bumblebee better than my Masterpiece one. The only two problems with this figure was that it had no Autobot symbol on his chest, and he didn't have his G1 blaster. I fixed both those problems by putting a sticker on his chest and giving him his blaster from the Centurion drone pack, which I painted, of course, because it was just gray plastic. Number three is Earthrise Optimus Prime. I think that this is the best mainline Prime ever produced up to this point. Nice colors used on this one. Not quite bright enough to invoke the G1 cartoon feels, though. Alt mode is just as good as the robot mode. When you look at the trailer, you can tell all the money went into the figure. A few paint apps on the interior would have made a lot of difference for me. And where is Roller? Number two goes to the Autobot with the highest opinion of himself, Skylinks. The paint is beautiful on this one. All modes look great. Even the base mode, which is unusual. The shuttle says NASA on it. And the name of the shuttle is Magnificent. Excuse me. Magnificence. The neck is, in my opinion, a nice feat of engineering. And the only flaw that I have with this figure is where the sky and Link's parts join together. The front holds, but the back does not. So be careful handling this one. For shame, Hasbro. Shame, shame. And finally, the number one spot. I'm sure most could have guessed this one. Scorponok. Robot mode, scorpion mode, base mode are all great. Nice colors used throughout, and where there is paint, it's flawless. Also, no decals. I love it when they don't come with decals. I hate putting stickers on. He's slightly shorter than the Titans Returns Fort Max, but that's okay because he's supposed to be. The only flaws with this figure that I have is the lack of accessories. It should have at least included two more shoulder cannons and his rifle. Also, I'm sorry that a lot of my equipment is visible in this shot. Couldn't be helped, folks. In closing, 2020 was a crap year in general. But it did give us some really sweet Transformers figures. Again, if you like what you saw, please comment below, like, share, subscribe, and ding that bell. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.